Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. As the temperature starts to change with the arrival of September, let's go ahead and kick it off with a brand new crochet stitch of the month for our temperature blanket. The September crochet stitch of the month is going to be the half double crochet puff stitch. I really love the texture of the stitch and I think it adds a warmth and dynamic to this blanket that we have not seen yet. The fact that this blanket is a sampler blanket as well and we haven't played with puff stitches yet, I think it's time definitely time. When you get a second, please go to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, and print out your calendar stitch card. Circle all the days that you are going to account for, so that way you can stay on track. On the stitch card, I include how to do a puff stitch, just as a refresher reminder in case you need it. For the pattern, I have two variations of the pattern. Understanding that this blanket some of us are at one stitch count, some of us are on another. I totally get it. So if you have, are at 192 stitches for your blanket, like I am for my size four weight blanket, then I'm going to be doing one regular pattern. I'm gonna show in the tutorial. If you are working an odd number, like 131 that I have with my size five weight temperature blanket. Then we are going to be working this pattern with one stitch difference at the very end. We're just changing one stitch at the very end. And I'll show you that in this tutorial so that way you can make this pattern work out awesome. And that way you can keep the sides of your work straight, which all of us are trying to achieve. <laughs> okay, when you are ready to go, you have your stitch card, grab your blanket, grab your yarn. Let's go ahead and start working on the September half double crochet puff stitch. All right, getting started. So the half double crochet stitch does not have a right or wrong side to the pattern. So you can really begin on whatever side of the blanket you want, it's not a big deal. Please ignore my ends. I have not gotten around to weaving them in yet. Have you gotten around to weaving in all your ends in yet? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know if you're on top of things, unlike me here. Go ahead and attach your yarn by slip stitching into that first stitch space. Great, and now we are ready to begin. You'll start by chaining three, and that chain three does count as your first double crochet stitch and takes that first stitch space. For this pattern, we will make a puff stitch in the second stitch space. So go ahead and yarn over, insert a crochet hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull through and go ahead and pull level. Then yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, pull level. Do that one more time, yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, pull level. You want a total of seven loops on your crochet hook, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before you yarn over and pull through all the loops on your crochet hook. There's your puff stitch. Ha ha! Then chain one, skip the next stitch and puff stitch in the next stitch. Yarn over, insert, pull through. There's five. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and there's seven. Yarn over, pull through all loops. Chain one, skip one. Again, yarn over, insert crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, insert crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through, make a song out of it. Yarn over, insert crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through. Till there's seven, then yarn over, pull through all, and repeat. That's all we are doing. Go ahead and repeat this all the way to the end, and I'll show you how we close off row one of this pattern. Awesome, to end row one, we're going to double crochet in that last stitch. Great, and that helps keep everything nice and straight. So with this particular pattern, we are ending with a chain one, skip one, double crochet in the last stitch. Okay, moving on to row two, we will start by chaining three. The chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch, and we'll take that first stitch space. We're gonna begin by making our first puff stitch in that first chain one space. So go ahead and work the puff. Right. And then chain one, skip over the puff, and then make your next puff stitch in the chain one space. And that is the repeat pattern all the way across for row two. Chain one, skip the next puff stitch, 
and puff stitch in the chain one space. Let me go ahead and finish row two so that way you can see how this will end, what to expect before you move on with the rest of September. Ending row two, we chain one, skip that last puff, and then double crochet in that third chain to close round two. And look at that straight side. Look at how pretty that puff stitch is. Very nice. Okay, so for this pattern, all we need to do is repeat row two over and over for every single day. That is it. Now let's go ahead and move on to what we would do differently with the pattern if you were working an odd number of stitches. All right, so now I'm gonna show you what the row will look like if you're working an odd number of stitches. So we will begin with the chain three, like we always will. That chain three counts as our first double crochet stitch and we'll take that first stitch space. Our next stitch is going to be the puff stitch in the second stitch. Yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. That's one, yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, that's two. Yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, that's three. There's seven loops on my crochet hook, yarning over and pulling through all seven loops. And then chain one, skip one, puff stitch. Repeat this pattern all the way across and I will meet you at the very end of row one to show you how it will look differently when you end this row with an odd number of stitches. Great. Okay, here at the end of row one of this odd number row, I did chain one, skip one, and that second stitch from the end, I'm going to make a puff stitch. Two, three, yarn over, pull through. And then I'm not going to chain one, I'm just going to instantly make a double crochet stitch in that last stitch space. Now, Tiffany, why are you not chaining one and then double crocheting? Well, because if I chained one, then it would flare this row out a little bit, just, just slightly, but as, as you're building that up, it's gonna slowly continue to grow, okay? So I wanna make sure that I do not chain one. I just instantly make that double crochet stitch have that nice, beautiful straight edge right there. So how you're gonna know the difference on how to end your work, whether you are working with an even number row or an odd number row of stitches, is really just kind of look at what's at the end of the row. If you're looking at the end of the row and you see that you can chain one, skip one, puff stitch, and then chain one, skip one, double crochet, then do it. But if you come to the end and you're chain one, skip one, puff stitch, and then instantly last stitch right there, then just know you're not chaining one, you're just double crocheting in that last stitch. All right, let's move on to the next row, just so I can show you row two, so that way you know what the repeat will be for you to just continue working this particular pattern for the rest of September. So again, chaining three, three, turning our work, so what we're going to do now is we are going to make our first puff stitch in that chain one space. So again, skipping the first puff, just go ahead and work puff stitch in that chain one. No big deal. Now, Tiffany, why are you not chaining four? Chaining three was enough to keep the side of the work flat. Chaining four, you could, sure, but I still felt like it was giving me a little too much slack here in the beginning, and I really liked what the chain three did, how it looked, so that's all. Chain three, and then puff stitch in that first chain one, and then chain one, skip puff, and puff stitch in the next chain one space. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish row two so you can see how row two ends and how everything's going to look as you repeat moving forward. Chain one, skip that puff stitch. In this section right here, we're going to puff stitch. One, two, three, pull through, and then instantly double crochet into the second chain of that chain three. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Straight. 
Awesome. So this is how we will do it, the row differently if working in odd number of stitches. Just repeat row two for every single day that you are counting for moving forward for the month of September. If you're working with this size five weight yarn for your temperature blanket, continue to work two rows per week. And if you are working with the size four weight yarn for your temperature blanket, again, we're working every other day. There you have it, the half double crochet puff stitch for the month of September. This crochet stitch changes the look of our blanket, just like the temperature changes with the season. Don't forget to let me know your progress on your temperature blanket in the comment section below, or tag me on social media, at Crochet with Tiffany, so I can see the colors of your blanket and how it's turning out. If you like this video, please push that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss October's crochet stitch of the month. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with the next one. Bye.